السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يوقد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله Today I have a very difficult task. I am going to try to simplify some of the lessons captured in one of the most beautiful ayat of the Qur'an, famously according to the people that study the Qur'an and teach us the Qur'an, the Mufassirun, they call it Ayatun Nur, the ayah of light. Uh, the ayah is particularly profound because Allah Azza wa describes himself on his own as light. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the skies and the earth. And when you study the Qur'an carefully, you have to, one of the themes of the Qur'an, one of the images that, refers, that, that is referred to repeatedly is light. So Allah has called Himself light. But Allah Azza wa Jal has also described the Qur'an as light. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا And you, the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also a light. In actually a famous hadith, he says, أَوَّلُ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ نُورِي The first thing Allah created was my light. So light refers to, and we all know angels are also creatures of light. So the revelation is light. The angels are light. Rasulullah is being described as a light. And Allah above all else describes himself as the light of everything. Nuru samawati wal ard. So what I want to start with today, before we get into this parable, is an important concept. When Allah Azza wa gives examples in the Quran, as some things we have to understand. There are two realities. And let me start with the most basic for ourselves. There's two realities. I have a body, a physical body that a doctor can check. But I also have something inside me that's not physical, that will not show up on any scan. My iman is inside of my heart, right? So let's talk about the heart. In my heart, my faith in Allah goes up and down. Some days I have more fear of Allah, some days I have less fear of Allah. Some days I feel so overwhelmed that it makes me cry. And those tears, actually the origin of those tears, they, they come out of here, but they started in the heart. You understand? So that's going on in the heart. But when you do a scan of the heart, when a cardiologist looks at your heart and the heart is beating regularly, your heartbeat and someone who has no iman in Allah, their heartbeat is the same. So there are two different kinds of hearts. There's the physical heart that you and I can see with our eyes and touch and feel and a doctor can check. And there's a spiritual heart, which is another reality. That's the reality of the unseen. That's the reality of the unseen. So. In this world, there are always two realities. The seen reality and the unseen reality. When Allah Azza wa Jal helps us understand things in the Qur'an, sometimes He talks about things we can see. So He'll talk about the bird. He'll talk about the tree. He'll talk about the mountain. He'll talk about things that we can see. But He uses them to help us understand things that we cannot see. You understand? So He'll use the visual, the things we can experience, and they'll help us better understand things we cannot see because they belong in the unseen. You see my ruh that Allah put inside of me when I was inside the, the belly of my mother and you were inside the belly of yours, that ruh is in the unseen. Nobody can see it leave the body. That, that belongs to the unseen. So Allah says, yes, rabbi. The ruh, they ask you about it, tell them it's from the command of my master. There's no way you can check for it. There's no way. You have been given very little of knowledge. Except very, very little. Meaning you can see, you know, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا People can know what is obvious in the world. But what's hidden, what's behind the scenes, what's the unseen, we cannot see. Right now there are angels on our right and our left. Yes or no? We can't see them. We don't know what they're docu- how they're documenting. You know? يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ Quran says they know everything you're doing. And Quran says that. كِرَامَ katibin, They're very noble and they're constantly writing and recording. They have books in their hands. And so all of that's happening, but we don't see it. So now, 
Let's start. Allah says He is the light of the skies and the earth. So there is light that you and I experience. There are lights on in this room right now. This is the, this is the seen light. But Allah is talking not just about the seen light, He's talking about the light of the unseen. The light of the unseen. But we're first going to contemplate on seen light. You see, this light that Allah has created, like the sun. Let's compare the sun to this light inside. Human beings, when, the, when, when Allah's lamp goes away, which is, the, which is the sun, then human beings have to turn their own lights on, don't they? And no matter how many lights human beings turn on, they cannot compare to the light Allah brings when He brings His sun out of the sky. So when Allah lights the skies and the earth, nobody can compare to how Allah lights the skies and the earth. You can spend all the money in the world to get the biggest bulbs, to get the biggest light fixtures, to create as much light as possible, and at the end of the day, the sky will still be black. It will not turn blue. It will not turn brilliant. You still won't be able to see the ocean the way you're able to see it when Allah brings His light. So the first thing is, you know, we can never compare with the light that Allah Azza wa brings. Allah's light can never, when Allah lights something up and we light something up, there's no comparison. Quran describes the sun as a, as a lamp. And compare us turning a lamp on and Allah's lamp, you see? There's no comparison. But here's another thing about light. There's two things we need to be able to see. To be able to see. First of all, the lights have to be on. If all the lights were off, you and I cannot see. Even if you have eyes, there's no point. Because there's the absence of what? Light. But there's another light that you need. That's the light of your eyes. Meaning the Arabs in the old times, they used to use the word light not just for the fire or the lamp or the torch. They used to use the word light also for the eyes. So what if all the lights are on and you're blind? You still can't see. There's two kinds of light. There's a light inside you, you already have it. And there's the light outside. And only when both of them are there, then you can truly see. Isn't that the case? The same exact way when it comes to the unseen world, Allah put light inside every human being before they were even born. They already have a light. They already have a light. That's something Allah gave them. This is the nur of the fitrah. This is the light of the nature. Fitrat Allah allati fatara nasa alayha. That every baby is born with. That's why the Prophet says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that every newborn baby is born in the way Allah wants them to be, meaning in pure, fit, pure natural state in worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's how there's... They're, they're, and then parents turn them into Jews or Christians or something else, you know. So that's one light that we have inside. But what's, you know, like the light of the outside? That's the light of revelation, Qur'an. Before that, Torah, Injil. Those are the light of revelation. And a, and a human being can have light inside and say, I don't know if I want to worship idols. I don't know if life is just about eating, sleeping, having children, making some money, and dying. There must be something more. There's a question human beings ask themselves around the world. It doesn't matter where in the world they live. If they have light inside them, they ask themselves this hard question. They say, life can't just be about living day to day. There must be something more than this. And they start looking for answers. That light inside of them is looking for answers. And they cannot seem to find that answer until Allah brings His light. And that's the light of revelation. So these are the two different kinds of light, and only then can we see. Now, some important things. What are, why, why do we need light? Without light on this earth, life couldn't exist. We couldn't sustain. Plants can't grow without light, which means animals can't eat, which means we can't survive. So first of all, light is necessary for life itself. If somebody doesn't have, if this earth did not have light, that means the earth would not have what? Life. The same way, if a human being does not have the light of Allah's guidance, if they don't have the light of who Allah is, and they're not introduced to Allah, they cannot see who Allah is, then they are as good as what? Dead. Their body may be alive. Their body may be alive, but spiritually they're walking dead. That's all they are. This is why Allah says to the Prophet wasallam, you know, لِيُنْذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيًّا you are here to only give warning to people that are actually alive. Meaning some of these people are already as good as what? They're dead. قَصَدْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts have become hard. They're, they're, there's no life inside of them. Now, that's the first reason we need light. is because it's life itself. Another reason we need light is to find your way. You see, there are hu human beings need... Uh, if it's daytime, you know where to go. If it's nighttime, you're lost. You don't know where to go. 
And even if you're driving at night, you have to turn what on? The lights. And the places you get lost the most is where there's no lights. And back in the day, when human beings used to travel during the day, they can tell which way is east and which way is west because of the sun, Allah's light. But when that light goes away, they don't know where to go. So what do they depend on? They depend on the stars, which is also light from Allah. If Allah did not put some light in the sky, in the day, and then in the night, we would never be able to find our way. Ships would never be able to go where they're going. As a matter of fact, even planes wouldn't be able to navigate, as I mentioned before. So without light, and that's specifically without Allah's light, human beings would never be able to find their way. They would never be able to get to their destination. The same way in the spiritual world, if Allah's light of revelation isn't there, we will never be able to find our way. We'll actually never be able to know where we're headed or where we need to go. We'll, we'll think we're running towards success, but it wasn't success at all. Until Allah sheds light on what real success is. Another reason you and I lead light is because without light, nothing is beautiful. Without light, nothing is beautiful. You can be in the most beautiful place. I mean, Cape Town, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful places in the world. But if you go in the same most beautiful places where the sun is gleaming on the ocean and you can see the, sh the, the shadows of the, of the clouds on top of the mountains and you see this spectacular view, but if you came there in the middle of the night, what would you see? Nothing. And if, if you did see something, it would only be because the moon is shining, because the stars are there. Unless Allah puts some light, beauty is dead. There's nothing good left. There's nothing beautiful left. There's only hopelessness and darkness and ugliness and fear without light. The same exact way, without the light of Allah's revelation. Just like He brings that light from the sky, like the sun and the moon, He brings Qur'an from the sky. He brings His Risala from the sky. He brings His guidance from the sky. That's also light. When He brings that light, things become beautiful. Things be and without it, they're not beautiful. You know, one of the most powerful places in the Qur'an is when Yaqub salam was told for the first time that his son Yusuf has been killed. Even though that was wrong, that wasn't the case, but now he's being told a wolf ate him. Yeah, a wolf ate him. This is not good news. But he has light inside him, doesn't he? So you know what he says? He says, فَصَبْر Anybody else would have said sabr. All I, all I can do is sabr now. He says sabrun jameel. Beautiful sabr. Even in that, he can find something Beautiful, because when you have the light of Iman, you'll see beauty in everything. Even in the most impossible things, you'll find a way to be optimistic and, be beautiful and, and see beauty. This is the, the value of light. And then, another very obvious observation about light, if you have absolutely no light, you know what you can't see? You can't even see yourself. If you're standing in front of a mirror, and the lights are all off, what do you see? Nothing. You can't even recognize yourself without light. Forget you don't know who someone else is, you don't even know who you are or where you are. You don't know what's dirty on you, you don't know what's clean on you. You don't know if there's an insect over here, you don't know if you're in any kind of danger, you know nothing even about yourself. Imagine if someone's kept in the dark for a long time, and after a long time they're let, the, let to see themselves, they won't even recognize themselves. That's me? That's what I look like? Because Allah Azza wa Jal describes to us, you know, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَصُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ Don't be like people who forgot Allah, meaning they don't have the light of Allah inside them. Then Allah made them forget their own selves. We don't even know our own selves without Allah, without His light. What a powerful image, just Allah saying He's the light of the skies and the earth. This isn't just about recognizing Allah, it's even about recognizing ourselves. Then if you go even further and think, Without light, you don't know reality. You know what kids do when they go to sleep? Sometimes kids, when you put them to sleep in their room, you finally think they're asleep, and it's dark, so the blanket starts looking like a bear. Abba! And then you turn the light on, it's just a blanket. Oh. But when it's dark, you don't know what that really is. In the dark, things aren't as they seem. You cannot tell what's real and what's fake. You cannot tell if there's something good in front of you or something bad in front of you. You cannot tell if you're about to trip on something. You cannot tell what you should avoid and what you should, you should not avoid. If the lights were on, you would not step in it. But if the lights are off, you'll step right in it. Isn't that the case? Without Allah's light, we don't even know what we're getting involved in. 
We don't know how dangerous it is or if it's good for us or it's bad for us because without light, we're acting completely blind. And imagine someone running in the blindness, running in the dark. You know how self-destructive it is to run in the dark? Wouldn't you have to carefully tread and figure out where to go? Quran describes people without light and he says, Kullama adha'a When lightning strikes, they can take a few steps. And then when the lightning stops, they're standing because they don't know if they're falling off the edge of a cliff. They can't run or anything. Without light, we're helpless. We don't know even the reality around ourselves. So I've said a few things now. You can't see beauty without light. You can't see reality without light. You can't find your way without light. You can't even know yourself without light. And then he, if the, the last piece of it, this is in literature around the world. In languages around the world, light is associated with hope. Light is associated with hope. And darkness is associated with sadness. When you see someone who's in a good mood, you say, there's a lot of light on your face. When somebody's going through a hard time, they say in many languages, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, the Arab poet in old times used to say, La Buddha lillayli an yanjali. The night will eventually go. You know, the, the darkness will break. The sun will come. The, the, the morning will rise again. And so the idea of mourning and light and, and, you know, illumination, these are things that are filled with hope. In other words, without light, human beings cannot have hope. Interestingly, by the way, the places in the world, some places in the world, they have 23-hour days, or 23-hour nights. 23-hour nights. And some places, six hours of night, and six, or six months of night, six months of day. And in those places, you find when they're in the night for six months, have the highest rates of depression, sadness, most people are overwhelmed with grief only because there's what outside? Darkness. Places in the world that are sunnier, you find people have better mental health. Places in the world that have a lot of clouds all the time and there's not enough light, people are depressed. People are sad. It's incredible that Allah even naturally made us happier, hopeful, optimistic when we have light. And when it's not there, our happiness goes away. Our hope goes away. So when Allah says about Himself that Allah is the light of the skies and the earth, then when you and I recognize that we have Allah in our hearts, we have faith in Allah in our hearts, then we find our way. Then we know reality. Then we know ourselves. Then we know beauty for what it is. Then we can measure things as they really are. Allahumma arini haqiqat al ashya'i kamahiya. Yo Allah, show me the reality of things as they are. Arin al haqqa haqqan warzukna tiba'ahu. Show us the truth as the truth. Show us what's real as reality. Don't, don't let us be deceived by what is fake. That's the, that's the power of light. Now Allah Azza wa wants to describe in this beautiful ayah. How, how can you appreciate Allah's light? How do you understand that Allah is the light of the skies and the earth? And that's Allah describing the skies and the earth. But what about me? He says, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ This is a very complicated example, but I'm going to try to simplify it as much as I can for you. It's very powerful and very beautiful. He says, the example of His light for you is like a niche. A niche in the old times, they used to have the wall, and inside the wall, they would make a little bit of a, a, a cave. And the cave is arched like this. You know, like in Islamic architecture, they kind of do this, this mihrab type shape, right? This is a large, actually, this is the shape of a mishkat, so it's a good visual. But these, are, these used to be very small, and they used to have a little shelf in there, so you can put a lamp in it. The, the reason they made it like that is because when, even if you put a candle in there, the light hits the back, and because it's at an angle like that, it's curved, the light spreads all over the room. So the design was so that you have one little light, but it can spread all over the room. And it's shaped like this. Now that's amazing because that's also the shape of the human rib cage. You see that? that? Our body is also shaped like this. And he says in the middle of that niche, he says, you know, uh, you know so مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتْ فِيهَا misbah. In it there's a lamp. Inside it there's a lamp. So inside this thing, there's a lamp. What's that lamp? That's the heart of the believer. That's the heart. And he says, Al misbahu fi zujaja. Now, by the way, this is when Allah is describing a lamp, he's definitely talking about nighttime. Definitely he's talking about what? Nighttime. Because when it's daytime, you don't need a lamp. So this is an image of something take, a, a, a scene that you have to imagine in the night, in the ancient times. There are no street lights outside. There is no highway lights. There is no, no tube lights, nothing else. There's just this mishkat, this little indent, and in that indent there's a lamp, and that lamp is inside of a glass, 
الزجاجة المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب now it's dark at night and he says this lamp inside of a glass by the way glass is something that stays clean on its own you have to clean it constantly huh you can leave it alone and it stays clean no you have to keep scrubbing it our heart our heart is around it is inside of our chest and our chest will constantly be attacked by shaitan dirtying it allah says alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas sudur is our glass and he'll keep making it dirty and we constantly have to what clean 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 and the moment you stop cleaning guess what's happening it's starting getting dirtier and dirtier and if you let it go for a long time it gets so dirty you won't even know it's a glass and you won't even know it's a lamp inside and even if the lamp is on guess what happens when the glass is too dirty the light doesn't come out the light is trapped inside if it if it gets too dirty it's not even a lamp anymore you understand so you're suffocating it so there's a light inside and this lamp hasn't been lit up yet by the way in, in the, my understanding wallahu ta'ala alam when allah is describing this analogy the lamp hasn't yet been lit up it's dark at night and there's this lamp and there's this clean glass az zujaja ka annaha kawkab durri this glass is so clean it's like a star twinkling in the sky like a pearly star in the sky kawkab was actually used for jupiter and jupiter is very commonly even though it's a planet it's you or the north star even the star that's used for navigation most in the sky the one that sparkles the most the thing is this glass on its own doesn't have any light and the, at night time the only light may be some light in the sky like the moon or star and even that little bit of light from the star is hitting this lamp this light this glass and the glass is twinkling now what does that mean for you and me with well, this every piece of this analogy allah is describing a physical image but using that physical image he's telling us something about the unseen world right that's what i keep referring back to so what is he telling us about the unseen world you and i have been given this heart and this heart has been preserved by something pure that allah gave us and that's actually a ruh a ruh that ruh is light and allah gave it from the skies the angel delivered it into your mother when she was still expecting you and you still have it inside you but that ruh needs to constantly be what preserved you can suffocate it you can make it dirty and it, it itself is pure the glass is pure but you can cover it with dirt and you can cover it with sins and you can cover it with forgetfulness you can cover it with all those things he says on its own it's perfectly pure even at night you can see this this the sparkle in it you can see that it's not even from this world ka annaha kawkab durri he says you qadu min shajaratin zaytunatin mubarakat mubarakatin zaytuna la sharqiya wa la gharbiya this lamp is fueled by an oil that comes from an olive tree let's talk about this olive tree for a second allah says this olive tree is blessed and it's not eastern not western well, what does that mean that means it's an olive tree in the middle of the desert one tree by itself when the sun rises it falls on the tree yes and when the sun falls it still falls on the tree if the tree was in the middle of a forest it only gets light from the top if the tree was on one side of the forest it gets light when the sun rises but it gets no light when the sun falls but if the sun if the tree is just by itself as soon as the sun comes up it's constantly getting exposure from what from allah's light from allah's light allah is telling us there's something inside us the fuel that we have inside us is actually forever connected to allah's light is forever connected to Allah's light it's not on the eastern tip it's not on the western tip it's connected to something higher than that subhanahu wa ta'ala so there's something pure inside every single human being it's so powerful that even a killer like firaun allah said to musa go talk to him la'allahu yadhakkar aw an yakhsha maybe he will benefit from the reminder maybe the light inside of him is still there and you can remove some of the mountains of dirt he's put on it but the light is still there so don't give up on him when allah describes that allah is telling us something amazing about each and every human being every human being that allah has ever created is good every single one of them is good every single one of them has something pure that can only come from allah inside of them they only come from allah that ruh that was so powerful that allah gave to adam alayhi salam we have been given from that ruh all of our arwah and that is coming from the command of allah azza wa jalla by the way what he put inside of us is called what ruh it's called what 
ruh. And one of the names of the Qur'an in the Qur'an is ruhan min amrina. The Qur'an is also called a ruh. The Qur'an is that pure. The purity of the Qur'an is now compared to the purity of what is given inside of the human being. What Allah has put inside each and every human being. Every human soul is sacred. It's pure. Nobody gets to say about themselves, I'm a, ter- I'm a dirty human being. I'm a filthy human being. No, you may have done filthy things to dirty yourself, but inside of you, there is something pure and it can still come back. The, the, so long as you're breathing, so long as you're still alive, there is a chance that you can restore your light. If there was no good left in you, Allah would not keep you alive anymore. He would not keep you alive anymore. This is Allah's sunnah. Allah's sunnah is He keeps people alive so long as they have the opportunity to get a way to come back. So no one, no human being is beyond hope. We think people are beyond hope. When you don't like somebody, you say that's a lost cause. You and I like to write people off and people like to write us off. Allah doesn't do that. Allah describes us with having light inside of us. So He says, Yagatu zaytuha yudli. This is now where, where things get intense. He says, the, now this is nighttime, there's this lamp, it's shiny glass, and He says it's oil, almost wants to catch fire. Even though light hasn't, the fire hasn't even been brought to it, a candle wasn't brought to it to light it up, but it still wants to catch fire. If you see pure gasoline or petroleum, if you light a fire, it's almost as though it runs to catch the fire. You see that? Allah says, if you clean yourself, as a, if you keep yourself pure as a human being, you'll notice something. When people don't cover their life with fake things, when people actually take a step back and think about what it means to have purpose in life, it doesn't even matter if they're Muslim or not. So long as they're a decent human being, they are going to start seeking something. They're trying to catch light. They're trying to find something. I've, walked, I've talked to hundreds if not thousands of people that have accepted Islam over the years. Thousands of people that I've met that took shahada. And you know one of the most common things they say, I felt like something was missing and I kept on looking. I just couldn't find, something in me was telling me there's more, there's more, there's more. And when I found Islam, when I heard a little bit of the Qur'an, it was like I could breathe. It was like there was something lit inside my chest. A non-Muslim friend of mine, when I took him to the masjid one time, and he's not Muslim, and he went with me to Jumu'ah, and he, he sat there and he prayed, or he just made the motions with us, right? And he was just saying, and he, after that, you know what he said? He, he said, I feel a lot lighter inside. His own words, I feel light inside. And he meant it in both ways, like a burden was lifted and he felt some kind of light, the presence of light inside of him. Allah says, it almost wants to catch fire, even if fire hasn't even touched it, then he says, Nurun ala nur. Nurun ala nur. What does that mean? The light that Allah put inside you since you were born, now gets to meet the light that Allah sent from the highest heavens, the light of the Qur'an. Those two lights meet with each other. And now you can see. You remember how I started? If you have the light of your eyes, but you have no light outside, you can't really see. If you have the light of the outside, but you have no light in your eyes, you can't see. So if the Qur'an is there, but your heart isn't clean, you can't see even if you're listening to the Qur'an. And if you have a clean heart, and you still haven't been given a chance, the, your vision is still limited. You, don't, you may have some light here and there, but it's not Allah's light. It's like you have a lamp in the middle of the night, but it's not like the sun came out and everything is lit. When you get exposed to, the, to Allah's light, then everything changes. Your reality completely changes. Everything is redefined. It's like you're in a different world altogether. Your worldview has completely been shaped. By the way, here's the remarkable thing about light. When, a, when light is a certain color, everything looks like it's that color. If you've seen, sometimes you have these red, back in the day they used to have these red studio rooms where they develop photos and they have red light inside. When you're inside, what color do you look? You look red, the pictures look red, everything looks red. Why? Because it's red. When you have the light of Allah, then everything you see is lit from Allah's color. And that's called Sibhat Allah in the Quran, the color that Allah wants. Everything you see is painted with the reality that Allah wants to see you in, or wants you to see. So your point of view is different from everybody else's point of view. Let me give you an example of that. Everybody sees a tree outside. The non-Muslim sees a tree, the Muslim sees a tree, the child sees a tree, the adult sees a tree. It's the same tree. But when a believer sees a tree who has the light of Allah in him, 
then the believer sees that its roots are very deep and its branches go into the sky. Just like the faith of a believer, Allah says, is like the deep roots of a tree. My la ilaha illallah are like the roots inside me. And the good that I do is like the fruit that it keeps on producing. That benefits birds, that benefits insects, that gives shade to human beings, that produces fruit. And will all continue to produce fruit. So all the good that I do will continue to multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply. And I'm being reminded to continue to do good deeds just because I looked at a tree. Just because I saw a tree. That was enough for me to get a khutbah because I have the light. I have the light of Allah in my, in my, through my eyes. This is nurun ala nur. Nurun ala nur. But let's start where we started. How did Allah describe Himself? Himself. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. All of this life that we're living, we're running after something or another. Now we, I, this is going to take about 7-8 minutes, bear with me, and this is an important lesson, and probably the most important lesson for today. Human beings, I mentioned this to you before, we're running after something. But you know, before we came on this earth, every one of us, we were in the presence of Allah. All of us. We met Allah ourselves. And Allah spoke to us directly. And we spoke to Allah directly. This is mentioned in the 7th surah of the Qur'an. You and I have already had a direct conversation with Allah. Allah asked us a question. Am I not your master? Alastu bi rabbikum. And we turned to Allah and we said, Bala, why wouldn't you be? Shahidna, we are witness. You are our master. In other words, we were directly exposed to Allah's what? Light. We were directly exposed to Allah's light. And we were directly exposed to Allah's beauty. We were directly exposed to Allah's perfection. Weren't we? And then it's been a long time since then, we were in some kind of fridge in the unseen, where the soul eventually was taken by the angel when the time came, maybe millions, maybe trillions of years later, and your mother was pregnant and you came down here. So the last conversation you had was with Allah Azza wa and now you're inside the womb of your mother, and you've forgotten about that conversation. Where, and, but that light is still inside you. Why, where did that light come from? That light came from the fact that you were in the presence of who? Allah and that light put, made you turn into light. You became lit. And now that light is inside you. And now you're growing up and you forget that there was a light inside you. And then Allah sends another one of His lights to you, which is what? The Qur'an. And something inside you says, this sounds too familiar to me. Why is my inside agreeing with this? It's agreeing with this because this is Allah speaking to you, but you, somewhere in your subconscious, millions of years ago, have already spoken to Allah. Just like when you talk to someone and you've spoken to them before, and it's been a long time and you hear that voice, and you, I've heard this somewhere. I know this. This sounds familiar. Why is this sounding familiar to me? That's what Quran does. It reminds us of that conversation that is buried deep, deep, deep inside of us. Alastu bi rabbikum. Why do you think the Quran begins Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen? Oh, Rabb, the same Rabb we said, of course, he's our Rabb. He's talking to us again. And that conversation illuminates you. And so you say, and, and, you know, again, now five more minutes. So bear with me. I'm keeping track. I'm keeping track. So now that that conversation has happened and you're refreshed, now you know who Allah is. You're reminded of who Allah is. You know, the Quran doesn't prove that God exists. It doesn't argue, let me prove to you that atheists are wrong. You know what the Qur'an argues? It wants us to remember. He says, in huwa illa dhikrun. It is nothing but a reminder. Reminder is something you already what? No, it's not new information, it's something you already know. Human beings, before they even came out of their mother, already knew. They already knew. This is just a matter of them being reminded. But what they don't, well, even though they don't remember that conversation with Allah, they remember one thing, Allah Azza wa Jal is the most beautiful. Allah Azza wa Jal is the most perfect. You know, in Allah Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal. Allah is beautiful, He loves beauty. So you know what humanity did when human beings came into this earth? We are not like monkeys, we're not like camels, we're not like you know, giraffes or lions or anybody else. You know what we do? When we make food, we want it to taste beautiful. We want it to look beautiful. We want it to present it in a beautiful way. When we dress ourselves, we want to dress in beautiful ways. When we speak, we want to speak in beautiful ways. Human beings want to make poetry. They want to make novels. When human beings build a building, they don't just want to build four walls and a roof. They want to make it beautiful. Human beings, unlike any other creation on earth, are obsessed with what? Beauty in everything. 
Notice that they want, and whenever they make something beautiful, they say to themselves, oh, this is perfect, I don't need to improve it. No, they say, this can't be enough. There must be something better and better and better and better. And no other species on earth does this, does it? Birds don't say, I made a nest, but ah, it's missing some color. You know? But people get an apartment and they get a sofa and they say, these, these curtains don't go with the sofa, let's go get better. No, it looks a little nicer. And then six months later, like, mm, we got to change it again. You know, it's not beautiful enough anymore. Human beings are constantly looking for more beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful. Where do you think that came from? That came from the fact that we were in the presence of the perfect beauty Allah Himself. And that, came, that, that inside the human being, they're looking for more beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful. And then they, they, they don't realize that when you, keep, when you search for something more beautiful and then more beautiful and then more beautiful, eventually where should it lead you? It should lead you to the most beautiful, which is who? Allah Azza wa Jal. So now we were in the presence of Allah, we're back here again. And Allah says, I gave you, the, I brought that light from a long distance and I let you have that light again. So we're like, but I want that original conversation back. I want to be close to Allah again. I want to be in the presence of the perfect beauty again. Look at how this ayah ends. Allah says, يَهْدِ اللَّهُ لِنُورِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah will guide whoever He wants all the way back to His own light. Allah will guide whoever He wants all the way back to His own light where this story started. Where humanity started. In the presence of the light of Allah. Human beings want to make it back all the way. And when human beings make it back all the way before Allah, and they're back in that light again, now they know there's no higher beauty to seek. They found it. There's no better light to seek. They found it. When they find that, then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiya. Come back to your master. Now you're finally content. You're finally at peace. Why, are, why is a human being at peace then? Because that's what they were looking for. They didn't even realize it. They did not even realize it. So he says, يَهْدِ اللَّهُ لِنُورِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ And at the end of this, this is all one ayah. And at the end of this ayah, he says, وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ He says, Allah gives examples so people can benefit. Allah doesn't need examples to understand something. Who needs examples to understand something? You. This reality is so powerful, it's so profound, it's so heavy, you wouldn't be able to understand unless I simplified it for you, Allah says, by way of a lamp by way of the lamp inside you. This is for you, not for me. Because I already know everything. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. Allah already knows everything. <laughs> so the example is for you and me. This is the journey of making our way back to the light of Allah. You know, I, I remind myself and I remind all of you that Allah has given us this light, this revelation. And it's supposed to be something that is felt inside of our hearts. Quran is to be recited, yes. Quran is to be memorized, yes. Quran is to be studied, yes. But until Quran is felt inside of our hearts, until it's felt inside of our hearts, Allah says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Isn't it time for believers yet that their hearts should tremble with the, with the awe of Allah and they, their hearts should be filled with awe because of what came down from the truth. Quran should affect what? The heart. The Qur'an should be affecting the heart. And when it starts affecting the heart, then every time it affects your heart, you know what's happening? Nurun ala nur is happening. Every time the Qur'an affects your heart, every time you hear an ayah and you shed a tear, every th time you're moved, every time your heart trembles when you hear the word of Allah, those are the moments where light has touched light. Maybe all of us, myself, you, we have dirt on our, on our glass. All of us. And in Ramadan, some of that dirt starts coming off. And we're standing in taraweeh night after night after night and we're listening, listening, listening. <sighs> but then one of those nights, the dirt is off enough that some light makes its way through and your eye starts getting wet. When that eye starts getting wet, you know what that is, right? That's light made, made inside. And then you beg, your, beg Allah, Ya Allah, can we keep this feeling forever? Can every prayer like, be, be like this one? Nobody else, and the person next to you they're still cleaning their dirt. So they don't, they're still, you know, but you're crying. And sometimes you're the one with dirt and the person next to you is rolling with tears. And you're like, oh. Well. And some people feel bad. This guy's crying. This guy's crying. Now this is making me cry. 
I'm crying because I don't know why I'm crying. وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ Just, I, you know, this is, the, this is my last night of, of giving you guys the rules. I have a, a program in the day with families, but I wanted to say a, a few words before I left. Uh, first and foremost, I am so honored and so grateful that I had the opportunity to come here, to serve in Allah's house, to share a reminder from the word of Allah. Every one of you that came and, and sat in the durus and listened, I'm grateful to you. Uh, I'm here as someone who's trying to do something for my own self, actually. I'm not here technically for you. I'm here for myself. And so each one of you that maybe, I, I pray that Allah overlooks my mistakes and whatever good that I had to say and anything that benefited somebody that, you know, I can't increase your iman and you cannot increase my iman. That light can only come from who? Allah Azza wa Jalla. My teacher once told me that you can talk to people for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and nothing can change. But somebody can come and say one word and when that word leaves their mouth and goes to somebody's ear, along with that word, Allah sends a kun. Allah sends a bee. And because of that one word, somebody's life can change. That's not because of you. That's because Allah said kun. Right? And what Allah is so merciful, Allah is so kind, that even though you had nothing to do with it, that they changed because of Allah, Allah gives you credit anyway on Judgment Day. Allah rewards you anyway. So I'm, I'm eternally servant, you know, you know, grateful to all of you that listened and inshallah ta'ala benefited in some way and maybe Allah put some light inside of you and I pray that Allah puts light inside of myself just because someone is speaking and someone is speak, uh, teaching you doesn't mean they have it. It actually means they need it as much as you do, if not more. So we're not in, I'm not in any better position than you are. It's very possible that somebody who nobody has ever heard them speak, when judgment day comes, their light, everybody's jealous of their light. That happens before Allah Azza wa Jal, because that's from the unseen. In the seen world, people are famous and people are not famous. People are knowledgeable and people are not knowledgeable. But in the unseen world, it's a completely different reality. You know? So you, you know, I, I pray that each of us are witness in our favor on judgment day. And that each of us are actually a means in this life to help each other further nourish each other's light. You know, when you, when you see someone missing some light, you don't kick their glass. And you don't spit on them. You figure out a way to gently clean. And when you, by the way, when you clean glass, you can't be rough, can you? Right? You have to be gentle. Because if you're rough, what are you going to do? You're going to break it. So if you see somebody else has a problem, the way to fix that is in a very gentle way. Because if you're rough with them, then you're breaking somebody else's heart. And that's a crime. That's a crime. So I'm, I'm just so honored and so grateful that I was given this opportunity and I'm so, so just overwhelmed with shukr to Allah Azza wa Jal that this was, you know, that Allah opened this, this, the, the, the people's hearts that I was able to have the, the permission and the opportunity to share some words of Allah Azza wa Jal with you. I, I, I genuinely ask all of you to forgive my mistakes. I know I make ridiculous jokes sometimes and people say, what kind of, what kind of Islamic thing is this? I need to repeat my prayer or something. I don't know, but... but uh, and so my due apologies for any shortcomings. I know some of you wanted to speak with me. I didn't get a chance to speak with you. I'll try to stay behind as much as I possibly can to address as, as many of you as possible. I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal gives me the opportunity to come back here again and uh, you know, to, to share some moments with you again. And I also pray that if I don't get that opportunity, that we meet in a much more illuminated place. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.